Guys, Louise in town. IRL. IRL for the first time. This is so exciting. It's pretty exciting. Look at us go. And we did want to put the disclaimer in that there's no funny business happening. Louise sitting on a chair. I am sitting on a bed, but we have limited space in my tiny New York apartment. So Louise in New York right now. Hi. Hi. I'm actually visiting some family and I thought I might stay for Sam's sentencing, but it makes me feel a little uncomfortable. So. Why? Why does it make you uncomfortable? I don't know. I have a lot of feelings about the criminal justice system and I don't want to get anything out of going to someone's like worst day of their life. And you know, whether, look at her, she's already vaping in my face. I know. You know, whether he deserves to go to jail or not, like that's obviously not my decision, but I'm not a fan. So I don't want to go sit there. That makes sense. There is something strange about being a spectator to someone's, like the worst day of someone's life and yeah. like lining up outside to watch it happen. At four in the morning and like a lot of people are having a good time, I can imagine. It just, uh, it's not what I want to be doing. Um, so I'm not going to do that. That makes sense. I'm going to go and play with my dog and that's that. Better use of your time. For those of you who don't know, Louis did lose quite a bit of money to FTX, so you are actually an FTX victim. I am an FTX victim. In the grand scheme of things, it's money that I can recover. Uh, but even then, like, had I kept all my Bitcoin, I would be feeling pretty good right now. I don't know if I can tell you with a straight face that I wouldn't have sold it, you know, already. It's would you? Up. Probably. I'm, I'm a really, really bad trader. <laughs> I'm a really bad trader too. It's not my profession. Uh, I have a different profession in the bankruptcy space. So I'm going to keep, you know, what? doing my cuisine. Doing your cuisine. I would consider you kind of a bankruptcy expert. I mean, because you, you to do some buy degree. distressed assets. You know, if you've watched my channel, you'll know that Louis comes on all the time because Louis knows so much about the bankruptcy and he's an FTX creditor. So he's balls deep. I might need to cut that line. I, I should cut that line. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I have Louis on all the time. Yeah, um, so I am a FTX expert more than anything else. I think by the number of claims now, I am the largest single controlling creditor of claims in the FTX bankruptcy. The way the FTX bankruptcy ha case has unfolded was not at all how I had imagined it unfolding from day one. It is, there's a lot of good things about that and there's a lot of really bad things for creditors. Mm -hmm. And I think we can talk about that at the end of the video. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Sam sentencing is kind of the like big... It's literally right around the corner. I mean, Sam sentencing is on March 28th, so it's literally Thursday this week. So we were going to start off talking about Sam sentencing. Maybe what we think we, he deserves, maybe. I mean... <laughs> no, I think we should, we can get to that. Like, what's interesting to look at is what the prosecutors are saying. The prosecutors are asking for 40 to 50 years for Sam. And the PSR is recommending 100 years for Sam. And Sam is facing a maximum of 110 years. Which is a long ass time. It's a, that's, I mean, it's obviously a life sentence. That would obviously be Right, but, and for anybody watching this, they'd be like, oh, 10 years is, those are just numbers, right? Like, it's like when you throw these big numbers around, you kind of get lost with numberitis, it's, mm -hmm. you know, when you start talking about the government budget or whatever, it just set big numbers, you forget how huge it is. Like, just think about where you were 10 years ago and imagine freezing that in time and all your knowledge of the world moving along, being completely frozen and you're confined to a small room for 10 years. It's, it's torture yeah. and very intense, cruel. Um, and so just remember that when you're wishing jail on someone, even though you've suffered from that person, have some compassion for what they're going through. Totally agree. John Ray III, uh, who's in charge of the FTX bankruptcy, he's also written in a statement to the judge. So for those that don't know, the way the justice system works in the United States is that you have a trial in front of a jury of your peers, the jury finds needs to find you guilty unanimously for you to be found guilty of your crimes. Sam was found guilty unanimously. He had a really bad defense. And let's face it, the guy was guilty as hell. And then the judge takes months to sentence you. I cannot imagine. And depending on the like severity of your crimes, you wait either in prison whilst you're sentenced or not. Like the 
uh, Theranos girl, she wasn't in jail. She wasn't in jail while she was awaiting her sentencing. Exactly. And so... Um, Sam has been sitting in MDC Brooklyn jail since August, I believe, August 11th last year. That's so tough. He's already been spending a lot of time in jail. And we've seen the picture. I mean, he we doesn't... We saw the picture. Good. He's lost a lot of weight. And I've done other videos talking about the conditions in MDC Brooklyn. It sounds truly inhumane so just that time when you're waiting for your sentencing must be rough oh god it's not looking good for sam so john ray has written in saying hey for for the first time actually this is the first statement by john ray where he acknowledges that although it looks like ftx creditors are gonna get a hundred cent recovery on their claims as of the petition date if you had a bitcoin in ftx and I had more than one Bitcoin in FTX, you would be looking at about a 20 cent recovery in your Bitcoin. Mm, literally solely because crypto prices have skyrocketed since the date of the bankruptcy and claims are valued at the petition date when Bitcoin was worth about $17,000. So. Just under 17. But that's just bankruptcy code. Like there is more value than that to give. Like Not code. that much more. Mm. And, and we'll talk about that at the end of the video. Like where, you know, where's that money gonna go? Um, but John Ray has acknowledged that it is not really a hundred and cent recovery for the 30% at least of creditors in FTX who were not holding US dollars or stable coins uh, who are holding crypto. Now you may ask, why was it that 70% of creditors in FTX had cash? It's because they were trying to remove the cash <laughs> mm. and they tried to remove their crypto and then they traded it for cash and then they tried to get out. So over 70% of FTX creditors just held cash. Yeah. So for those creditors specifically, they are going to get 100, 100 cents. I, it's a little cash. more complicated than that because every creditor claim is different. And like most people that at least I've seen had a mix of crypto and cash. Yeah. So like maybe you had 30% of crypto in your account and 70% of cash. You were trying to remove whatever you could remove. Yeah. And you were trying different venues. Like... You know, it's a bit... Some people were pure crypto claimants. You know, those guys are suffering right now. Yeah. Anyway, Sam is asking for six years. He's asking for between five and a quarter to six and a half years, which I think for a lot of people feels like too low. But I mean, like we were saying, I mean... Six years spending, is, is a long time. It is still a long time. It is a really it long is. time. Yeah, you could become a doctor in that time yeah. and like have a whole new life. Uh, I don't wish any harm on anybody, but... Yeah, completely. And like we said, the government is asking for 40 to 50 years. If you look at Sam, Sam is already 32 years old. The average life expectancy of males is 77 years. And apparently there are some stats that show that every year in prison you spend, two years of your life expectancy are cut short. So a 40 to 50 year sentence is basically a life sentence for Sam Bakeman Free. So in France, uh, you can't sentence anybody to more than 20 years? It's illegal? Just for any crime, even yeah. violent crime? Yeah. Really? You can be detained in prison forever in France, essentially, if you are uh, considered like a menace to society right. and stuff. But Which would, call, like, for violent crime. Yeah, 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 yeah. A life sentence in France is actually 20 years. Wow. Yeah. So someone like, so Sam would have... Go. Got max, it would be max 20. Maximum 20. You probably get out way before as well. Wow. I don't see any need for more than 20 years, personally. Well, you can pop the question. What of what I think you deserve? Or what you deserve? <laughs> I don't deserve to go to jail <laughs> at all. Of what you think Sam deserves. We had an yeah. Aperol spritz right before this one. We had a little drink. Just one. Um, to get us in the mood, you know. <laughs> Brief pause, but I wanted to thank the sponsor of this video, Claims Market. It looks like FTX creditors are likely to be made dollar whole, but we don't know how long that could really take. It could potentially be years before FTX creditors see a payout. And it looks like FTX creditors will be paid out in fiat currency, so they're losing all exposure to crypto. FTX claims prices continue to increase, and the generic pricing for large claims above a million dollars is currently between 93 to 97% of the claim value. Just to be clear, not all claims sell within the 93 to 97% range. There are other factors involved like claim size and preference exposure, but overall this is the absolute highest that claims have ever been sold. By the way, in case you haven't calculated the value of your FTX claim, Claims Market recently added a claims calculator at claims-market.com. If you click on FTX calculator in the upper menu, you can input your unique customer code to find the value of your claim at petition date prices, the quantity and names of the tokens you held in FTX, as well as locate your claim in the March and June 2023 Schedule Fs and in the amended January 2024 Schedule F if applicable. 
Claims can be sold quickly, sometimes even on the same day that they're listed, and you can view this on a transparent transaction history at claims-market.com. In fact, Claims Market is the only broker to have publicly visible transparent documentation. The majority of trades are confirmed within two to three days of listing, and once a trade is confirmed, buyers are contractually obligated to send payment to the seller within two business days. There are zero fees to the seller for listing or directly selling their claim, only for small claims that Cherokee buys. In other words, if you're in need of immediate liquidity so that you can reinvest back into the crypto market or do whatever you want with that cash, without having to wait potentially years in bankruptcy, claims market is an excellent choice. Claims market is credible, they've actually transacted the most crypto claims in all bankruptcy cases, including FTX. In fact, over $300 million of crypto claims have been traded on claims market in the past year. By the way, just to highlight Cherokee's credibility, if you search for filed by Cherokee acquisition in the FTX bankruptcy docket on Kroll, you'll see all of the claims transfers by Cherokee on claims market. These are evidence of transfer documents which show the transference of ownership from the seller to the buyer of a claim. They must be approved by the judge and the court first, which emphasizes Cherokee Cherokee's legitimacy and credibility. They also have almost 150 five-star Google reviews. If you'd like to sell your claim or get more information, you can find Claims Market on Twitter at claims underscore market, on YouTube at Claims Market, on LinkedIn under Cherokee Acquisitions. And to be clear, I'm not telling you to sell your claim. I would never tell you what to do with your own money. But again, if you're in need of immediate liquidity and don't want to sit through a potentially multi-year bankruptcy, Claims Market is an excellent choice. What do I think Sam deserves? Um... I think Sam deserves five. Why do I think Sam deserves five? I think five will be an incredible challenge for him to survive, but I do think he'll be able to survive and like atone for his crimes as a civilian and maybe bring some good to the world. And like, if you lost money on FTX, like I did, I'm sorry, it sucks, but like, I think it's important to move on and him being in jail isn't going to do anything yeah. for my losses. And also the view that it's a big deterrent or not a big deterrent for future crime, I actually don't believe in that that much because fraudsters commit crimes all the time and they don't seem to be deterred. Madoff got a 150 year sentence, which was largely symbolic because he was already in his 70s, but like there are still financial crimes. So. <laughs> and Madoff is different. Madoff committed his fraud for like, what, 40, 30, 40 years. And, mm -hmm. and you know, Sam committed his fraud for six months. So it, that's true. I mean, the start of the fraud, I guess, is, look, is looked at as, uh, as beginning in like, I think June, 2022 or something like that, so. And the te technically legally, like, if you look at the bankruptcy code, the amount of total victim money lost is zero. In reality, the total money lost is the difference between today's Bitcoin price or, you know, whatever crypto index price you want to take and the price at bankruptcy, which is about 50K mm -hmm. per Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And it adds up to probably around $10 billion, which is not nothing. It's a lot. It's a lot. And it really hurts. So I'll let you guys make up your own mind. I mean, both of us are victims of crypto bankruptcies. And to me, I'm just, I'm, even for Alex Mashinsky, like to, to me, him being in prison for a really lengthy sentence doesn't help my situation at all. I'm personally not someone who's necessarily vindictive or vengeful. So I don't like actually, I wouldn't wake up with pleasure every day that I think he's in jail. So I know some people are that way. One thing to note is that in the federal system, apparently there's no parole. So a lot of people are saying, oh, if he gets 20 years, he'll be able to get out in half that. Apparently there's no federal parole or there's no parole in the federal system. So the most he get off is I guess 15% of whatever he's sentenced to for good time. What would you respond to? I guess the main comment that I'm sure we're gonna get from this conversation is Sam is worse than a violent criminal. He's basically a violent criminal because many people might have committed suicide based on his crime. What would your response to that be? Because personally, I think that there's a massive distinction between the emotional distress wrought by financial crime versus being actually <laughs> a murderer or a rapist or a pedophile. No, of course. And like a violent criminal is obviously much more of a danger to society. And to some degree, like a... Uh... I agree with people's sentiment that, hey, if it's somewhat case by case, because if someone is a cunning fraudster who's caused a lot of harm to people, that person should be put away and, and kept away from society. Mm -hmm. And I would want to measure that person's prison sentence as a function 
of the crimes that they've committed. And in that respect, I would say someone like Alex Mashinsky deserves more prison time than Sam. And it's not because I, I've i never met Sam and, you know, I don't know Sam. It's just Alex Mashinsky actively went on YouTube and said, I want your grandma to deposit her money onto Celsius. Yeah. Sam wasn't exactly doing that. And he wasn't actually like that predatory towards people. And I think the degree towards which someone is a predator towards weak people or less educated people really counts. Yeah. And I wouldn't personally put Sam in that bucket at all. Yeah. I think Sam made some really bad decisions. I think Sam said, fuck it, it's going to be fine. And it wasn't fine. Mm -hmm. And he's caused a lot of harm. And he should be punished for it. But they, I don't think the government has a right to take his life. I agree. I think Alex Mashinsky was definitely more predatory in like the statements he made and like the people he was targeting. He was trying to get people to move money from their Roth IRAs and their bank accounts. I mean, he was saying Celsius is safer than a bank. Uh, I think he was more predatory, but I think that he's going to get a lesser sentence just because it looks like the U.S. sentencing guidelines prioritize the dollar amount itself above all else. And obviously, Sam, his FTX is a much it's, larger company. Yeah, but Celsius is still billions mm -hmm. of dollars it, and the recovery was awful. Oh no, I think that like I still haven't Alex gotten should paid. Get more. <laughs> yeah, you did have, he has a Celsius claim too. <laughs> yeah, I still haven't gotten paid. From Celsius. I'm actually getting screwed by Celsius as well. Because I'm getting paid in US dollar and not in mm. in crypto. Yeah, you're getting fucked by Celsius. I'm getting fucked by Celsius. And FTX. <laughs> and FTX. It's nice. Um But I do think that Alex is a more sinister person, but I th I think he'll get a lesser sure. sentence because it's a less high profile case. The dollar amount is smaller. And I think that thirty out of fifty six of the total offense level, I don't know if I'm using the correct terminology, but the levels that Sam got for his sen for the sentencing guidelines, 30 out of 56 are just based on the dollar amount. So uh, yes, it looks like Sam is... Which is somewhat unfair because if you're a guy like that's being predatory to, you know, grannies in the Bronx and you only steal $5 million from mm -hmm. 5,000 grannies and you get less time, I feel that's more predatory. I completely agree. Then, you know, Sam did commit a fraud against some, like, mostly prof a lot of professional traders were, like, yeah. caught up in that. Um, anyway, one of the things that, like, FTX has opened my eyes to, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people's eyes to, is the U.S. bankruptcy system is super intense and predatory, and it's probably the best one in the world, which it just tells you, like, how fucked globally our systems are to deal with this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The lawyers on F the FTX case, which were also Sam's lawyers, are charging one and a half million dollars a day. And I- Solcom? Yeah, Solcom and Gromo, yeah. And I think by the end of this, you know, they're gonna, not just Solcom, I think all the firms, the total fee, there's a lot of different firms doing different things. I think it'll be over a billion dollars of fees and they get paid first. Yeah, oh, wow. Basically customer funds. Basically customer like funds. Eating and away at people's recoveries. One of the big questions that we're going to get answered from the sentencing is what is going to happen to the money seized by the U.S. government that was Sam's personal money, uh, which was actually one-to-one -one traced to customer creditors. Mm. And what they considered as personal money that they could get was in the United States... Sam pulled customer money out of FTX and bought about, whatever, 8% of Robinhood. Bought a lot of Robinhood shares. And the government sold it for like 800 or so million dollars and they grabbed a few more things and it's a total of roughly a billion dollars. The big question for me as an FTX creditor is, is that money gonna go to victims via the bankruptcy? Or is it going to go to victims via a state-run restitution procedure? And I am or praying... Remission. Re remission or restitution. I confuse which which is which. Mm -hmm. And everybody else is, will get that confused. Unless you're a lawyer. And then congratulations, you know the difference. I million times would prefer the U.S. government to say, Hey, we're going to give this to John Ray to then distribute to FTX customers. Mm -hmm. And it can only be distributed to FTX customers because the list of creditors is FTX customers, Alameda lenders, and then next in line is actually the CFTC and the IRS, which have together nearly $10 billion in claims that are like 
valid. So equity holders are never going to get any money. It's just very unlikely. Mm. And so the U.S. government would have to insist that that $1 billion would just go to creditor claimants. I don't know if it's going to make a difference. The bankruptcy code is not lenient at all on paying creditors more than 100% of petition date. Even interest is really tough to get. Mm. So it's just not designed for this stuff. Um, for crypto? Like the bankruptcy code? It, just it is not, not designed for crypto. No. But so this, for me, this is like a big week. Uh, shall we go over a few docket Let's items? Go over some have, docket items. We, we were reading the docket. While that, we were drinking our little Aperol spritz. I have no life. He has no life. Yeah. Um, if that was a date, can you imagine how boring that date would have been? <laughs> Guy orders drinks, pops out his phone, and it's like, reading wait, bankruptcy I need filings. to read the bankruptcy files. <laughs> Um, Writing notes on a little piece of paper. So. Let's go over the notes that we made during our Aperol spritz. It's on the receipt of this expensive <laughs> Aperol sp spritz. <laughs> FTX has sold 60% of the Anthropic shares for $884 million. Mm. I backed out the math. That implies an $18 billion valuation for Anthropic. Wow. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever used the Anthropic Cloud AI tool. I have not. It is crazy. As a child, I... I never thought computing would get this good and I am terrified of the future because it's just the beginning of this stuff and mad how intelligent that thing is. See, this is something that Sam and his EA community are terrified about. Well, they, they invested in it and they all of the like leaders of Anthropic are all EA guys. Mm -hmm. Interesting is that FTX publishes these monthly op uh, operating reports and Celsius used to publish coin reports, they were called. Right. The Celsius coin reports were omitted a lot of information, but they were legible by humans. Mm -hmm. In the FTX case, they are purposely like releasing 50 odd documents at a time and making them very, very hard to read so that creditors cannot keep informed. It's on purpose. It's so that the average creditor can be kept completely in the dark of the proceedings of what's going on. And I think it's not good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had a look. I'm going to get my team to have more of a look to see if we can get more information. What I did get out of them was that Sam had a somewhat a lot of crypto left in Alameda Research, very little in FTX. They sold $33 million in February of FTX crypto, and they sold $310 million of Alameda Research Crypto. Don't know what those tokens were. They just have a list of tokens. We don't really know. Some Solana is included in there. They sold some VC investments of SAM totaling $46 million, 40 of which was IEX. And if you've read Michael Lewis's previous book called Flash Boys, Flash Boys was all about IEX. Oh. Which is kind of funny. Fun fact, yeah. I didn't know that. And that, according to Michael Lewis, is how he met SAM. It's because the guy mm. called Brad Kutsuyama, who started IEX, he wrote this book about him, asked him, hey, I'm meeting up with this Sam guy, what do you think? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, Check him out for me. Yeah. Michael Lewis loved Sam. And Michael Lewis loved Sam. I loved all of Michael Lewis's books. I really did not like the book about Sam. Going Infinite? Going Infinite. What are your thoughts on Going Infinite? Uh, I thought it made me question everything that Michael Lewis had to say in all his other books. Interesting. Why? Um, I mean, because you felt he was too lenient and believing of everything Sam had to say? Or Yeah, I mean, it's typical of reading an article about something that you know a lot, a lot, a lot about. And like, you know, I knew personally some employees at FTX who just happened to be my friends or re referenced in the book. You know, they're not, they haven't done anything wrong at all. And they are victims too. And like... Their perspective is very different. My perspective of what happened is quite different. And I think Michael Lewis was just charmed by this guy. I think Michael Lewis went through some really tough personal events. Um, and that must have had an impact because I, he essentially says, this was all a big mistake and everything is going to be fine. And it really wasn't a big mistake. Sam essentially tried to bail his hedge fund out using customer money and it failed. Um you should pay the price for that. Like, it is what it is. Like, he did commit that crime. But the price you think he should pay is probably not in alignment with what other people think he should pay. I know there's so many people out there who want him to get a full life sentence, but... Um, it's just not in my ethics... <coughs> Me neither. ...to wish 
an end of life basically for someone unless that person needs to be like removed from society for like the protection of others complete i mean that's what i think that the point of prison and jail should be to keep the public physically safe yeah and and, and then punish somewhat but yeah. like sam is not going to come out of pri- if he gets five years in five years he's not coming out of prison to go rip off grannies i, I mean this is such a high profile case nobody out there does not know who sam bakeman freed is at this point i mean there's no way he's going to be able to just start a company no this. but you know i wouldn't be surprised if alex mashinsky got five years if if like in 10 years that guy is defrauding people with some other thing I mean, Alex, I think, is a much more sinister and malicious person than Celsius. Well, the underlying company was a fraud from day one at mm-hmm. Celsius. And, like, people who say, hey, FTX was a fraud from day one, too, it is not true fully. Yeah, the, that code was in there, but let's be honest. If you traded on FTX, I traded on FTX. Did you want to trade anywhere else? Like, it was the best. The user experience was awesome. It was fun. I like gambling. You like gambling. Let's face it. It was a good <laughs> casino. It just was. <laughs> Like, it's not the same without it. And we're all clamoring for FTX 2.0 because, let's face it, it was fun. It was cool. The the experience was good. And now we're all sad because the lawyers killed FTX 2.0. Well, I guess we're both generally probably a little bit more... I don't even know if sympathetic is the right word. I mean, you, you did get fucked by FTX, but I guess just ethically, neither of us are people who want to see not yeah. only criminals go to prison for life. I get a lot of heat for saying that, but oh well. Sam sent things around the corner, so I'm just being honest. Well, it was good seeing you, Tiff. Thanks for having me on. It was good in, seeing you, too. In IRL, in person. I'm going to start asking Louis for dating advice and other things. Tell us things that you'd like Louis to give me advice on or to talk about. So, uh, I have a lot of nieces and nephews. I've got six. And they all um, ask me questions. I'm like an uh, agony uncle. Uh, they call me Dr. Uncle Louie. I could have my own podcast about me giving people dating advice. Ooh, he could. I mean, yeah. Louie's in a successful relationship right now. I'm in a pretty successful relationship. Mm-hmm. So he needs to give me dating advice because I'm not. Well, I've done a lot of dating in my life and a lot. I've made all the mistakes imaginable possible. And, uh, you know, I'm, I think my general take on dating is and long-term relationships is that the Americanized view of relationships is based on sitcom culture, mm-hmm. which doesn't exist, and that's why people get divorced so much. Mm. That, like, if people saw long-term relationships as, like, uh, a real partnership through life to get through stuff, the okay. person you're with in a long-term committed relationship doesn't have to be everything to you at all times. Mm -hmm. But that person needs to fit what you need them to be at some times. Yeah. And like super high expectations. The the road to disaster. You're not there yet, but when you're in, you know, when you start moving up in the relationship world, you know. I do think that is the problem though, that everyone is looking for someone who fulfills every single need in their life. Which is impossible. Yeah. That's why I have a dog. That's why you have a dog. Your girlfriend can't fill those needs. No. That your dog's... No. <laughs> they both complain just as much, though, when they're hungry, so... <laughs> this is true, and I complain when I'm hungry, too. Louis going to also try to set me up with some of his friends. Maybe. My friends all have issues. But yes, <laughs> you should be prepared. That's it. Um, I have to go see my lawyers. Okay. So. Leave any comments for what you'd like Louis and I to talk about in the future, because Louis is always fun to have on the channel. I am. <sighs> He's got a meeting. Bye. Bye. Just a wild guess. How long do you think he'll get in prison? Wild guess between 20 and 70 years. Okay. Okay. I think basically I think like there's so much public pressure on this case. He can't get less than 20. And then – I think giving him 119 years maximum sentence or whatever doesn't make a ton of sense. I personally, for like white collar crime, it's super under prosecuted. Um, I'm like a fan of more people getting sentenced and not life sentences. Like, you know, you have to just give a consequence to these people's actions. Um, You don't have to throw the book at them forever. Like, uh, but... 
But um, I'm not going to cry if Sam goes to jail for the rest of his life. But I don't think necessarily that that's going to benefit society more than if he goes to jail for 20 years. I don't, you know, I think it's going to be probably about the same. And um, I'm just for more of those prosecutions happening. And like, I think even if like some of these influencers, right, that did like smaller scams got like one year, right, or even six months, I think the whole landscape of fraud in that space would change. Because it just sends a very public signal like, okay, we just don't tolerate this.